Hello and welcome to the Poor Hammer Podcast, episode 57. I'm your host, Brad. This is my co-host, Eric. How's it going? Today's episode is going to be a fun, more relaxed one. We've had a big episode last week and a terrible week this week. (laughs) So you're not getting some big, complicated, huge notes taken, whipping out six different books for references. We're not doing that. Nah, we're just having some fun. So crack open whatever you enjoy and let's get to a fun topic on models we wish existed. Sounds good. All right, Eric, on this episode, I'm going to play a genie. Well, that doesn't quite work because I'm making wishes too. On this episode, (laughs) we have found a genie lamp. Brilliant. (laughs) We're allowed to wish for one new unit slash model, whatever, for each faction. But the genie has three rules. Number one, no wishing for an existing model to be updated. Yeah. So you can't you can't just wish for a Tyranid range update. You can't just be like, give me Keldor Drago, but not shit with a sword that breaks every time I look at it. Exactly. Okay, fair enough. Number two, this one's more for me than you, but no named character wishing because you're a simp for them in some lore book or something and they don't have a model yet. And rule number three, this is for both of us because I can't be trusted. (laughs) You must wish for something that is in line with the faction's lore or identity. I cannot wish for every faction to gain a dinosaur. Fair enough. Even though that would be better than what most factions will end up with. We need a dinosaur faction. Yes, I agree. Make the Exodites real. (laughs) Yeah, I think it is one of those that what we're wishing for has to make sense in the army. I can't just be like, I want orc stuff in every army. (laughs) So, yeah, these are reasonable rules, I think. All right, so as a final thing, let's let's start with Xenos. We always do Imperium, then Chaos, and Xenos, and it's very unfair. Let's switch it up. <laughs> we could start with Tau, then. All right, let's do Tau. Uh, I think mine's a pretty famous one. I, I assume most Tau players have had this thought at some point. Melee crisis suits, or maybe like a broad-sized suit. Yeah. I want mechs with swords. Right. Give me my Gundam with a laser sword. Yeah, the classic weeb. I want to have a Gundam with swords, and it looks cool. We just saw Farsight. Yeah. They weebed him the fuck up. He's got the sweet shoulder pad things, all of that. That is where I want the next unit for Tau to go. Give us that, because it, it solves two things. One, robots with swords is cool. You're not wrong. But two, Tau has the balancing issue of they are a, what is called a one-phase army. Yep. They shoot and that's it. Their melee is non-existent. They literally don't have psychic. They are a one-phase army. This means they are very feast or famine on when they're obnoxious to play against or just awful and you feel bad for them. It's just very, very difficult to balance just because of how that you don't have the ability to tweak so many parts. It's either too strong or laughably pathetic. Yeah. And so by having melee crisis suits or whatever, you would end up with a unit that can be like a mid-board bully or at least an anchor piece on mid that can tussle. You can throw it into combat. You can now at least be a well-rounded non-psychic army like custodies, etc. Yeah, and I mean, I don't think it needs to be like the best option in melee. No, but it does need to be a viable option for the army to where you want to take this unit. Yeah. Because then we can pull back a bit on the super powerful guns required to make up for having nothing else. Right. And it'll give them a, they're still mostly a shooting army, like Admech is, where it's mostly a shooting army, but you have the ability to play melee. Yeah, that would be very cool. And like you said, the model would be very fun. And we can start with one of these and then branch up and down from there to like a stealth suit sized one or whatever after that. But I'm only allowed one wish and I want to open this door. (laughs) All right. What do you got then? So mine's less about the actual army balancing and stuff like that. I just want a giant mech that's big enough that's like it can transport other units because I think it's cool to have mechs jump out of a giant mech. So you want, like, sort of like the Townar, but 
It's got to be like bigger. Yeah, this this has to be like a super heavy giant. We're talking big and almost certainly not worth it in most games because when you get to that kind of scale, point wise and balance just doesn't really make sense. But I think it's so cool from like a rule of cool to have mech suits jumping out of this giant mech that's walking across the battlefield. Like that just, it hits the like six-year-old rule of cool for me and I want it. (laughs) Yeah. And I know they have like transport planes to like drop off the suits and stuff on the battlefield, but like I get what you're talking about and it would be, it's funny. It's like the, um, what's the gigantic one? The Stompa for orcs. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar in like, yeah, nobody's ever going to use it like realistically in trying to win, but it's so, so cool. (laughs) It's an art piece. You're allowed to wish for that. I mean, yours yours makes more sense for what's reasonably to expect and what will work better in the army. But I want the model. So. <laughs> All right, let's move into one of your factions then and see uh, how you want to expand orcs. Okay, so I'm actually really happy with where orcs are. There's a lot of really cool stuff. I gotta agree. But I would like to see more Grot-based things, particularly, like, my wish would be a Grot-based Defcopta. Okay, so, like, have them, like, do a true fast attack roll then. Yeah, and, like, it would be similar to the other, like, Grot tank type stuff of, like, it looks kind of dumb and meme-y, and I'm all on board of that. Like, I want it to be not a Defcopta. I want it to be a Grot-based flying thingy that's fast. (laughs) <laughs> I love that you're like, I don't want it to be serious, like a Def Copta. Yeah. Very serious models, those. That is a serious orc model, though. It's about as serious as you get in orcs, I guess, sure. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I want it more grot-based stuff. Even dumber. Yeah, I want it to be even dumber. This is the mech failed at making a Def Copta and just <laughs> threw it off to the side and the grots went, oh my gosh, I can have that? <laughs> Only works for like two turns, then explodes wherever it is. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I want more grot ability focused army type things where, like, sure, sure. So you can play an alternate weird thing. Like, if you play like a full Sisters of Silence army and custodies. Exactly. There are a decent number of grot things, and that's close, but you can't really do it, in my opinion. And I think it would be fun. Yeah, sure. Partially because there's already so much cool orc stuff that I'm like, okay, let's fill out some more grot. Okay. Uh, mine is the exact other direction. I love bee snaggas. It's the part of orcs that I jive with. That makes sense, yeah. They're way cooler to me than the junkyard aesthetic, which I know is Eric's stick. Yeah. But I guess deep down I am a snake bites or something. <laughs> you like the pigs? Yeah, I love how the squigs look, where the big squigs look very piggish <laughs> and sort of like if a shark and a pig had a horrifying child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at the front of the hunter rig right now as we record. Yeah. And we see the squigasaur baby thing that moves it forward. Right. And he's got his sweet rhino horn they welded to his head. <laughs> I just want a like a an elite unit that is like maybe a runt herder equivalent guy who like wrangles them. Yeah. And then like just three of these big boys. That would be I do like those models. Like it's not really my part of the army, but Squigs are so cute. Look at the big chompy shark face. Squigs are cute yeah it's dumb when you're like a pig mixed with a shark is cute but then you look at the models and you're like well I'll be damned they actually are <laughs> I love that part of the army so I'm here for more beast snaggas and I'm here specifically for more squigs in beast snaggas yeah I would love to see more squigs and I mean they did a decent amount of them when they introduced it but there's room for more all right we did one of your armies I guess we'll just do one of mine next let's talk about the necrons what are you interested in for necrons and remember we have rules so rule two is kind of required for what I want to be a thing yes it is you cannot put characters in doesn't count okay so i love the canoptic part of necrons i love the destroyer part too but i think the destroyer part has like the right amount of models all it needs is like an update to the original locust destroyers that's what they're called now but the original destroyers they need to get updated in looks a bit okay other than that destroyer part of the army looks great as long as we're including like flayed ones into it which 
They're the same thing, even though they're different. But on the canoptic side of things, we've got scarabs, we've got spiders, we've got wraiths, we've got the reanimator, which doesn't really work with the rest of the army, but it's there. <laughs> Crypto thralls. And the terrible Doomstalker, who has just the worst cannon. Those are all good, but we need a troop equivalent. Something to act as like a, hey, I want to just play a Technomancer and his horde of monstrosities. Like, that's the battle I want to play out. Right. So I want a Canoptic troop, probably playing on like the Murder Bucket look, like the Crypto Thralls. Okay, I wasn't sure. I was like, would it be like Scarab kind of or? No, probably looking like a pure robot version of what Necron Warriors are, but without the pretense of having ever been a living being or anything. So like Necron Warriors are obviously the Necrons here who became Necrons. This would be entirely a construct, like the rest of the Canoptics are. Something that is a machine built for labor. In this case, actually built for war to replace Necron warriors long term. Okay. This gets into like the whole lore thing with Necrons. They're a dead race. There will never be another Necron. Anyone that fails to reanimate is gone forever. You're minus one Necron for the rest of time. Right. And there's the whole like a bunch of them go crazy. Yeah, and there's Flare Virus, there's the Destroyer, or the Flare Curse, the Destroyer Virus, all that stuff. Like, they're they're on a downward trend. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. They're the masters of the Materium. They are the highest tech society in the 40k universe. Making proper robots is within their power. I mean, it's definitely a possibility, and it would be cool. They already made wraiths and all that for construction work. Those are all construction robots, with the exception of, like, the Doomstalker, that have been repurposed into combat. Oh, okay. Scarabs are, like, the little buildy robots that disintegrate and rebuild stuff. Oh. Wraiths are the things that, like, build whole monoliths and stuff. Spiders are the tomb keepers. So, like, actually make one designed for war instead of maintenance workers that they just threw into the war because they could. Yeah, because your Necron construction equipment involves lasers anyway, so... <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that would be really cool. And honestly, I think just a canoptic troop would be fun, even not to have your army that's canoptic based, but like a canoptic troop would be cool just in a normal Necron list as well. All right. So what do you want out of Necrons, Eric, for a very different perspective than mine? Mine is a bit different and kind of hard to explain, but I want a primary support unit that basically shields and protects an area that isn't just an HQ. You want the Gungan shield things from Star Wars. Yeah, kind of. Or there's a unit in StarCraft II called the Sentry. It creates like force fields that like block people off and it has a guardian shield that like stops as much damage kind of thing. And it's just a support unit. It technically has an attack, but only technically. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so you're talking like you would make it like a heavy support, but with no gun. Yes. Instead, it's like providing an invuln field, a feel no pain field, whatever. Yeah, I do whatever you need to do to make it Necron-y, to integrate the whole Necron tech aspect. But like, I want it to be a support unit. It can technically have guns, but they're gonna be not good. Okay, so like... The reanimator is like a beta test for this thing because its whole thing is it's the big tall walker that no one plays because it's really bad. Yeah. But it target one unit of warriors and they reanimate better. Right. But you're asking for one that's like a, it pops out like a big shield aura. Yeah. In, in like this zone of control kind of thing is now supported and the enemy is going to feel that support. It'd be kind of cool if we could make like a hard line wall. Yeah. Where, like, you just spawn and block off a lane with, like, an impassable, doesn't have breaching wall that you can put up, like barricades. Yeah, that's kind of, like, the whole, there's more that can be done for a support-only unit than just, let's make other units more difficult to kill, or, you know, the reanimate type thing. There's, like, there's also, you can make temporary, like, barricade type stuff like that. And I think Necrons is where I would put that type of thing, at least for now. But there are some rules questions that you'd have to figure out. So I get why it's complicated. And again, this is like a, a tough explain for me. But I feel like Necrons need a support heavy that's not guns. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm with you. That sounds really cool, actually. All right. Uh, I guess we can 
we'll do Votan because it's like cheating it's so easy because it's not a full army yet but right let's do Votan what do you got here so I just want flying bikes. I think I am ruined by the dwarf aesthetic from Total War. I want like those types of flying things, but pushed into 40k for the Votan. And I think bikes are probably where it would make sense. Yeah, they already have the sort of the tricycle bikes. And I hate it. I love that design. <laughs> I can get what you're saying, though. You want like a you want more like an 80s type aesthetic for bikes. Yes. I feel like they're just not going that way with Photon, though. I agree. They're going for like that retro future look of like the the Jetsons, the 50s look. Seeing what they've done with the trike, I have no expectations to get what I actually want because, like you said, they've kind of already done what I want, but in a different, they've gone a different direction. But I don't care. This is my genie wish. I want them to go the direction I want. I want flying things that remind me of dwarfs in Warhammer with cool stuff like that. <laughs> All right. I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm going to go with what I think is probably the most common answer for this right now for Votan. I want the, the retro future punk look they've got, but I want mech suits. Yeah. I want like the Thunderkin, but bigger, like a Dread or a Grey Knight Baby Carrier. Yep. Something in that size range. I don't care if it's open or closed. Either way, I just want to see dwarves in like the loader from Alien. Oh, okay, okay. Like yeah. the Invictus Tactical Warsuit that SM have. I want that. I think it's only a matter of time for Votan to get a Dread equivalent of this mech type suit thing and i think it they could do some cool stuff with their current direction of design style but yeah votan's tough just because like it's half an army really yeah it's kind of cheating because you can name half the unit types in the game and they just don't have it yet yeah so well, let's go into one that's probably the hardest on this list for me which is tyranids yeah tyranids have a lot of models and a lot of options tyranids are the reason for rule one you can't just be the same thing but fix it <laughs> So uh, I'll start off then. I want a large tanky melee monster, something that is the Carnifex, but like the bigger, like the actual siege monster equivalent, not Carnifexes who are more like dread sized. Okay. So you're talking like big. I want a big boy. Yeah. I want the Ultralisk, like the true Ultralisk in like, you know, the, the scale where it's like five stories tall, ripping down buildings. Yeah, the, the scale in some of like the cutscene type things of like, yeah. it's just running through buildings in a city and like tanks are like, it just stomps on them. <laughs> Exactly. So I want that uh, an equivalent to the Tyrannofex or the Haru Specs, but probably still bigger even. Yeah. And I want it to be like giant enemy crab equivalent. Like, <laughs> like I want the creepy big Tyranid monster. What do Tyranids do to have a knight equivalent? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense of like, make it make it a knight equivalent that's melee based, that's gonna be Tyranids, but actually like tango with a knight. Yeah, I know the hero drool exists. You don't have to tell me. I want a smaller than that, but like, I'm looking for that midway point between the current where Tyranids cap off at in plastic and where the two big bio titans in Forge World are. I'm looking for their knight. Yeah, and I mean, I think that would be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not going to deny more Ultralisk style Tyranids. So what do you want out of Tyranids? Because this was hard for us to get through and like figure out what they don't already have. Yeah, and mine is complicated from a rules aspect because it doesn't really happen and wouldn't really work in current balance, I don't think. But my idea is to have a drop pod type thing that enters closer than nine inches but explodes when it enters. So Tyranids have the mycetic spore thingy. They've also got their own... The Forbidden Flashlight. Yeah, whatever the fuck it's I, called. I know what you're talking about. I don't want that. <laughs> I think a key aspect of what I want is it enters closer than nine and it explodes. So whatever is coming out of it has to take your transport exploded type thing. Right, like half of them will die on entry. Right, but the benefit is... You're closer than nine. We can make it five, six, something like that. And it exploded. So your opponent takes damage from it exploding when it enters. 
Right. And I know what I want from a like high level. That would be cool if you had this orbital drop pod that smashed into your enemy units, exploded, damaged them, but also damaged some of your stuff because you were on a transport that exploded. Right. But a couple of gaunt still make it through and don't die on impact. Right. But from a rules aspect, actually figuring that all out to like make it work would be complicated, I think. Yeah, it has a couple of barriers in my mind of like, we got to make sure it's not broken. Right. We got to make sure there's a reason this isn't just a strat and there's a proper model for this and it's not just a way they deep strike closer. Exactly. Because like drop pods stay in play, like that's why they have models, whereas this would just turn into a crater. Right. But maybe it's like uh, you build the drop pod goo sack and then you build like a crater goo pile. Yes. That stays in play. And it's just for looks, but it's a fun kit that you just always end up building because it's cool. That would be exactly what I want. (laughs) Where like, yeah, it's not like, yeah, it could just be kind of a strat. But at the same time, if you're going to use it, it would be so cool to have a model to be like, this is what's happening, dude. Shit's exploding. Kind of like how AOS evolves spells by having spells that have physical representation of their effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's awesome. Okay. I like it. And we had to go a little weird on Tyranids because it's like, what don't they already have? It's just 25 years old now. Right. Rule one, can't just fix the old model. <laughs> can't just delete Gene Stealers and never talk about them again because that kid is so heinously ugly. <laughs> Speaking of. Oh, Gene Stealers. I'll go first and we'll do a new variation on what the aberrants are. But I don't want them to just be more muscle heads. So like the biophagus in lore is supposed to be experimenting and like trying to tyrannidify humans right okay tyranids are more than gene stealers the gene stealers cause the gene stealer cults i get that but when a biophagist injects you and starts working on you you should be able to turn different directions because the whole thing with tyranids is the variety of evolution gene stealer cults is about converging everything into the worst kit james workshop made 20 years ago Hey, no, that's not fair. It's cool. So I want to see like a lithe, agile, smart, something in that category variant on Aberrants. Like what if it mutates you into, you know, like a unit sort of like going off of the zoanthrope part of the, the Tyranid genome? You know, it's a Tyranid gene seed. No. Yes. Gene seeds are different. No. Same thing. <laughs> I just, I think it would be more interesting to see more than just turning everything into a single unit of Tyranids. Like, Gene Stealer cults should expand in variety to feel a little more like utilizing the evolution of Tyranids to have a tool for everything in their uprising. And I think that that touches on why is Gene Stealers its own thing? And why is it so unpopular as it stands now? Yeah, where it's like, if we're going to actually have gene stealers as its own thing, then it should be more than just the aberrant, musclehead, big, dumb idiot. There should be more to it that should be more fleshed out into the smart aspect would be pretty interesting. Like, we get it in the characters. I get that a lot of the gene stealer characters are psychers. Yeah, but we can have more than just HQs that are interesting. Right. The whole thing with the Tyranids is they are a psychic species in general as a hive mind right. thing. Like, that that's the whole thing. So playing it up more outside of characters helps give it an identity over other armies that are just, hey, it's a bunch of units and also a couple Psyker characters. Like, that's half the armies in 40k. Right. All right, but anyway, let's do what you think we should go with. So, I want a rocket launcher gene stealer that is potentially problematic from a sales standpoint. (laughs) Okay. I get what you're saying because you want the, their whole shtick is like the 80s guerrilla warfare. Yes. Making use of what you found faction. You want the classic guerrilla with a rocket launcher, but the problem is that can cause problems with what factions on real earth. Yes. Have been known to use. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see what you're talking about. But it, it like, okay. I feel like we could fix this. But you don't give it to neophytes. You give it to aberrants and have them dual wielding RPGs. That could work. That would be enough. And it doesn't, it doesn't have the imagery attached to it that could be. Yes. 
problematic from a sales team perspective. I would, yeah, if you make it the, like, clearly this is like an aberrant thing. It's not a... This is not a human, yes. Yeah. We're going to avoid the T word so this video can go to YouTube. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're being very careful here on uh, <laughs> what's, what's being said. But I think that that could work actually really well. And I think that having that heavy weapon rocket launcher type thing would help a lot of Gene Steeler lists in what they're able to do. Yeah. And funnily enough, as we record this, Gene Steelers is currently like the highest winning faction, even though they're wildly unpopular. That's its own. So they're, they're a statistical nightmare, but yeah. they are the most powerful faction specifically because they finally got free heavy weapons. Right. So you can stack up actual anti-tank and it really does help the faction solidify its answers. If we're able to get like a unit that does that, then we don't have to balance the rest of the list around things like what we currently have. And honestly, I think you can still balance them this way, but there's other problems with the layers of custom sub-factions. There's problems. Let's not talk about that today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, rocket launcher dude, let's put it on an aberrant. I'm good with it. <laughs> but we can move on. Brad, I'm sure that you are so, so ready to talk about Drukari. I was painting my Drukari earlier today. That sounds about right. When are you never not painting your Drukari, in quotes? I have nine unpainted models left, Eric. Sure. My entire army. <laughs> it takes like four shelves. It's ridiculous. So for Drukari, I'm a coven player. We know this. And in the same vein as how with Gene Steeler cults, they're all muscle heads. Covens are about like enhancing the Eldar body and like going beyond and like using Xeno stuff to pump them up or to take a Xeno and turn them into a pain engine and be a horrific nightmare creature. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that sounds about more on the Drukari aspect for me, but <laughs> they go both directions on Covens is equal opportunity there. Hey. You know, I understand. But much in the same vein as Gene Steelers, I'd like to see an equivalent thing for Drakari of Covens don't have a fast attack role. Right. They have racks for troops. They've got grotesques, which you are legally obliged to either 3D print or kit bash and never use the fine cast model. Oh, come on. What are you talking about? It's probably fine. And then we've got Talos and Kronos for our heavy paint engine slot. And I love the Talos and Kronos. They're great. They're the best kit in Drakari, flat out. Yeah. Honestly, they're the reason that I'm on board of like, let's make more Coven. <laughs> yeah. They're specifically the last models I haven't painted because they scare me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I want is a fast attack equivalent. And like thinking about what kind of body horror stuff Coven's could get up to for a fast attack thing. Right. I think we already have some examples for a baseline to play off of. Like there's the Slith, who are the Xenos that work with Drakari, uh, Urgul's, Clawed Fiends, who are horrifying dogs without skin. <laughs> I want like an, a, a Flayed One equivalent, where you take someone and turn them into like a clawed monster, but is intelligent, even if it's like a little bit nutso. Okay. But I want that aesthetic of the clawed fiends. I want like a horrifying zombie monster, right? Yeah. And I want them to be fast and scary. But you want them to be more like troop kind of era? Small, little, frail things, but just absolutely horrifying. You do not want them touching you. Yeah. Drakari's Coven models have shown that they can do stuff like that. And it's pretty cool. So <laughs> I'm on board, man. More Coven stuff would be cool. All right. So what are you thinking, Eric? It is funny that you bring up the Slith which I had to actually go Google searching to figure out. So one of the models that I really thought were cool for Jukari was the Snake Naga things, and they're apparently called the Slith, and they're not actually Jukari. They're another Xenos or something like that that just work with them. Yeah. I want more Slith, and particularly since looking at some of the lore, trying to figure out what the hell they were, they're apparently like bodyguards on hire. So they're supposed to be like awesome at being bodyguards with weapon knowledge and that kind of stuff. I want a Slith model that's like a weapons expert. Like an elite combat character. Yeah. And like, really like, let's, let's make that data sheet large. <laughs> Let's put options on options, man. I want Slith oh, okay. weapons expert. Like, they get to do everything, but they're cool. Basically, I just want more Nagas, and this is the way that I saw to do it. 
That's fair. I'm with you. I'm always for more snake people. Yeah. That's a cool aesthetic. And on a side note, Court of the Archon is fucking stupid. Yeah, I had to explain to Eric before the show how that all functions, so he's fresh on his opinion on that one. Fucking stupid. That's my opinion on it. Let's let's go to our less fun-loving brothers over in the Azurani. Uh, so for Craft World, what do you have for them? Uh, this one's tough because I don't, I don't know. I don't really care much about them. They suffer a bit from the tyranny problem of they're an old space marine equivalent where anything old marines had, they had their equivalent of. Very fleshed out line with a ton of redundancy, so it's hard to find new things to add that aren't just fix the old stuff. Yeah, and at the same time, like, a lot of it just doesn't interest me. Because, like, a bunch of these, I'm like, I just want a cool model. I don't care what else it does. I just want the model. But... Craft World doesn't really do that for me. I think it's pretty fair to say for both of us, Craft World is like the faction I care the least about. Yeah. I will say Space Marines is my least favorite faction, but like I know them inside and out. I know how to play them. I enjoy playing them at certain times, but Craft World is like a null zone of I don't care. Yeah, it just doesn't really do anything for me, but the Dark Reapers are cool. (laughs) So that's a take. It's just something about that model aspect is so not craft world to me that I'm like, all right, then let's see what else you can do. So I guess I want more of that with the maybe like a howling banshee type weapon loadout for the Dark Reaper look. So you're you're looking for like Dark Reapers, but more like Grim Reapers, like scythes, like with Magnum Ra or whatever his name is. Yeah. Lore-wise, I know why that one won't work out, but I get what you're saying aesthetically with them. And, like, the army doesn't need that. They have options to do it in other ways. But I had to find something, and I think it would be a neat model to have Dark Reapers that are more on the Maugen Ra scythe-wielding things. I don't know, man. What what do you have? Because I'm clearly grasping for straws. Mine's easy. The only part of the army that's any interest to me is wraiths. Wraiths are pretty cool. I want a StarCraft Dragoon. Oh, hell yeah. I want a walking tank. I want wraiths, but a tank. I want it to be a little bit unsettling, like the the way dragoons are, where it's like, why is this a four-legged thing with a cannon on it walking around and being a dead person? Yeah. Like, flat out rip it off. It's fine. We all know how the story went between StarCraft and all that stuff. Just take it back. Yeah, dude, that would be... So how big are you thinking? Uh, Tank size. Not not overly huge. Like a Redemptor Dread to Gladiator size like you don't by Brother Space Marines. Like that size range. Yeah. But less full because it'll just be the legs taking up a lot of space. Where it's like a, a core body that's holding the dead thing and then legs that are creepy looking when it walks. A little bit smaller than my Triarch Stalker. Okay. So something in that range. Yeah, dude, that would be, you know what? I'm on board. Let's do it. Let's let's start the petition for the Dragoon in Craft World because that would be so awesome. <laughs> All right. Should we talk about the Yanari in the room? Wow. Yeah, sure. So a little bit of a rant. Yanari needs to either exist or not exist and not whatever's going on. <laughs> it's three characters and rules for soup. Yeah. Figure it out, GW. I Honestly, the whole Yanari, Craft World, Harley Quinn thing that's happening right now needs to be figured out. Do something. So if we're going the route of finally fleshing out Yanari and making it a real thing that we didn't just like dip our toes in and run away from, yeah. I want to see... A unique non-character added to Yanari only, where you have to play Yanari rules to play it. Okay. Because currently Yanari is, you play it when it suits you. If it's a tactical advantage, you play Yanari. There's no reason to actually play it, unless you like the Yakarnet or your Vrain's ass. (laughs) Those are are the only reasons you're here. Hey, that's a fair reason, man. (laughs) So I want to see, like, what happens when Craft World and Drukari put aside their differences fight together for a while, learn from each other, and create a more elite unit that can only be in existence when they work together like this. So, like, you take Craft World's military aspect with the witch's melee prowess, or you go the opposite way and do, like, a Dire Avengers equivalent, but based around the poison weapons of the Cabalites. Okay. Something like this. I want to feel that they're working together and have made a new faction out of it. You want an elite unit that basically came about because these two separate things are actually working together for long enough that they're like, we can figure out what's the best and just smash it together because we need war power. (laughs) 
Exactly. All right. Uh, what's what do you want out of this? Because there's not much to work with, so it's kind of a blank slate. Mine's similar. I also want an elite kind of unit, but I want it to be based on the Incarnate. That model is so interesting to me in how it's designed and how it looks. It's true. It's about like the only unique thing Yunari has going for it is like the get possessed by your god and yeah. turn into like a demigod type demon monster. Yeah, and I think that there could be an elite that's like it's possessed by this whatever god thing is happening but it's not like a full incarnation okay so we go with like a possessed equivalent from csm yeah and have the same like keep the aesthetics that are going on there and like flesh that aspect of what yanari are i think honestly if we had both of our wishes for this combined with the fact that yanari soups the other two major factions that could feel like a cool third middle ground that would work as a nice way for a drukari player to want to go into craft world eventually or the opposite direction and at the same time i actually feel like a unique thing that's not just soup yeah, Yanari just needs some help, man. All right, speaking of needs some help, let's talk about the most underutilized faction to be added to 40k. Yeah, Harlequins. I think Harlequins are awesome, and I'm definitely not the only person that think Harlequins, from a look aspect, are super cool. But they're a faction with eight data sheets. Even less than Votan, so let's just get more. But honestly, I want something that's a, a troop, not troop but a troop <laughs> i get what you're saying yeah you you want something that is not the troops but you want an equivalent basic infantry yes like a different a different branch of it yeah and i want it to be kind of tankier and like a little bit more melee focused of like this is another aspect of they're not just jumping around twirling knives there has to be a little bit more to it a different version of the performance aspect Exactly. There's so much that they need, and there's so much possibility with that aesthetic that it's anything, but another basic infantry troop style thing would help the army. Yeah, you're looking for an equivalent to Rax in Drukhari, but for yes. Harlequins. Exactly. Because, like, Harlequins, their whole shtick is they're fine. They're allowed to hang out everywhere. Like, they're allowed in Kamra. They're allowed in Craft Worlds. They are doing the bidding of one of the Eldar gods. So they just go as they please. Yeah. So they should be able to learn from all aspects of Eldar society. Yeah. And then put their own fun little twist on it. Okay. I went the exact opposite direction, but the exact same idea of Harlequins needs more variety in the range. Wraiths are the only good thing Craft world have going for them <laughs> let's have harlequins have wraiths i don't care if it's like the same as the wraith sprue but a couple differences and you paint clown faces on them i feel like we can do a little bit better than that you can you could do much better than what i'm saying i'm saying i'll take that basic yeah but it would vastly change what harlequins have access to it increases their diversity by almost double with a single unit yeah which i think it comes back to the whole aspect of like quins just need more and anything more is good but honestly let's stay away from just filling it out with hqs yeah i will give them one named hq because they literally don't have one yet yeah they can have that too let's not make harley quins a here's a bunch of hq options and then six other data sheets yeah like i guess you can give them like what deruthiel the red swan sure but like yeah they need a named hq at some point but sure all right, we're going to move on to demons. We're going to only have one model. We're not splitting it up, Brad. You don't get four. No cheating. You get one. I'm already cheating, Eric. No. I'm starting off with what I think is the weakest point in demons if you have to put all four of them together. I want the Furies back, but that kind of breaks a rule. <laughs> Still mad. They randomly deleted a unit after updating it finally after 20 something years, and I bought the fuckers. Yeah. Anyway, I want a unit that replaces the Soul Grinder, and we just get rid of the Soul Grinder in every game because AOS players hate it, 40k players hate it, it's stupid, go away. It really doesn't make sense to have the metal crab leg thing with a demon on top. For the otherworldly beings, yeah. Especially because, like, it's AOS playable. 
Well, I didn't even know that, and that's fucked up. It's because it comes from Old World, because, like, it's a 1980s model. <laughs> that makes sense on why it's in Total War as well now. It's dumb. God, that's so stupid. So, get rid of the metal part. I want a full, big demon monster. I don't want a demon prince. I want a big, fuck-off monster. Yeah. I want it to be horrendous. I don't want you to look at it and go, this is an intelligent, devilish person like a demon prince. I want you to go, oh my god, that's a horrifying act against all that is holy. Really, it is the soul grinder as a demon and not whatever the fuck soul grinders were. Yes. Yeah. So that's what I'm looking for. And I preferably this kit would split four ways where you can build it up different ways. Probably has to be like a hundred plus dollar kit minimum with how GW does things. I want an excuse for me to own like 10 of this thing in various loadouts. I get what you're saying. And I mean, it's going to be a heavy point costed model anyways, like 200 point ish plus options and stuff. So like, I get what you're saying. And you're kind of cheating, but also not really because it is a separate new thing. But mine was tough. I had to teach Eric. <laughs> Apparently, Pox Riders of Nurgle do exist. Did exist. They followed the Furies on going down the trash. Which, given how they existed, is good. Because, holy shit. <laughs> Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you get to look at this beautiful monstrosity of a model from Forge World. What? What? Why? <laughs> no. No. So... <laughs> So let's look at how they look in lore with Total War and the most amazing looking model from, I assume, 1910 with the skill level involved. Yeah, it was one of those that, like, playing Total War, Warhammer, the Pox Riders of Nurgle look so cool to me. And I was like, I want that model. And I was, like, thinking, well, hold on, I think, I feel like I've seen something similar to this apparently it wasn't just people making it and it was this disgusting abomination of a model that should have never existed so apparently i can't use pox riders of nurgle but i got really nothing else so i guess a transport that's nurgle focused would be kind of neat oh that could be sick it could be a very disgusting model as like a, a bunch of like holes in this giant pus filled monster sack thing <laughs> Oh, like, I'm imagining, like, a giant frog, right? Yeah. And it just spits out the Nurgle creatures, and then it can still be, like, a big melee monster that eats people afterward. Yeah, kind of like the frogs in Konosubo. <laughs> yes. Okay. You know. But, like, the horrifying Nurgle equivalent. Yeah. Honestly, I just want Pox Riders of Nurgle to be done correctly, but I think a Nurgle transport would be very cool now that we've kind of talked about it more. I think there's a lot of options there, and it would honestly help Nurgle-focused lists quite a bit, in my opinion. They're supposed to be slow and tanky, but, like, we can put a transport there, and it won't be fast. It will be slightly faster. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm with you. Yeah, I don't know, man. Demons is a rant, but we can move on. We've got Chaos Knights, and this one's interesting. So with Chaos Knights, I would first like to congratulate this episode topic as being the first time we don't put Chaos Knights and Imperial Knights together. Yeah, they are different in this aspect. Finally, <laughs> we can move them apart so I don't have to say they're the same thing over and over. So what do you got? I've got a classic. This is anyone who plays Knights long term is aware of this. Every 3D print studio that has ever done Knights has some spider leg Knights or horse legs to make a Knight Centaur, whatever. Okay. I want a Tyrant class equivalent that plays up that Chaos Knights have been in the warp for 10,000 years and shouldn't just look like their brethren but with a couple spikes put on. That's really how it feels like. I want to see some real heresy. Give me mechanical spider leg knight. Give me mechanical centaur knight. And we've kind of seen some of it with the wiggly arm tentacle things. A little bit. Very subtle hints going on that we can push. Yeah, so like the Abominate's a great beta test, but we can go much further. Yeah. I want a tyrant class knight. I want it to be heinous. I want like, this does not resemble a knight. <laughs> Yeah. At least below the torso. Above the torso, maybe you go, oh my god, this used to be a knight. Right, where it's like you see that it's clearly like, wow, that was a knight, and then what the fuck happened? <laughs> Let the Dark Mechanicus go crazy. 
Hey, man, that would be sweet. And that would be very different from Imperial Knight and would fit awesome aesthetically to what Chaos Knights should be. All right, what do you have then? Mine's up kind of on the same idea, but I took it as it would be interesting to see what happens to a knight that was so warped that it was no longer able to stand on two legs and was like fallen to four-leggedness kind of thing and then adapted from that so like you take like a rampager but it's like started to like crawl on all fours like it's depraved yeah and then like make sure that it's still like big vertically we can make it look like an atat where it's like all legs (laughs) but like i don't want it to be this like squat it looks like a tank okay it needs to still be vertical (laughs) it like evolved into a four-legged large thing yes. and it just had to become four-legged because of it but it's very clearly still a knight that just fell over and then stretched kind of thing okay this could play into what i wished for these can be the same thing yeah but like yes this general idea i'm here for this yeah again like we have same idea of like let's push the chaos uh mutation type nonsense to chaos knights let's not just make it oh they've got spikes (laughs) speaking of oh they've just got spikes what do you want for CSM? I want more Sonic weapons. I knew you were going to just mention it. No, I, fuck, fuck you, okay? You know what? <laughs> Noise Marines are the reason Chaos Space Marines are cool, in my opinion. It's like the only reason I think that they're that cool. I agree. I want more of them. You just want Emperor's Children to exist as its own faction. Basically, yeah. Let's play into that aspect. Yeah, you want the, like, the Sonic Dread that existed in, like, the 1990s or whatever. You want, like... There was a Sonic Dread? Yeah, the original original back in the day <laughs> there was old metal dreadnoughts for each of the factions you know my thousand suns dread that i 3d printed yeah that is the thousand suns dreadnought that used to be an old metal model oh someone made like a 3d model equivalent that's a little bit off okay but like it plays into that there was one for each of the four gods previously okay yeah because i mean that's kind of where i'm at i'm like i want a vehicle that's sonic weapons you know like they just put like giant speakers on a dread (laughs) or something Mm -hmm. you know like sonic weapons are such a unique take on warfare in 40k you don't realize it you really just want emperor's children to exist Uh, yeah i mean i guess because that's that's the cool part like i get it i get it so what do you want mine is going to be the most basic answer that i'm sure every csm player feels in their soul yeah where's our redemptor hellbrute where's our brutalis hellbrute ah where's our a hellbrute that is not 511 with rules that look like a terminator with more wounds this is chaos yeah they should have warped the hellbrute into something that is strictly better than dreadnoughts instead of being it's a dreadnought except it's got spikes <laughs> There should be a reason that the Redemptor and the Brutalis are required. Right. Yeah, actually, that makes a good point. They were already on par with Hellbrutes. Now they just destroy a Hellbrute by looking at the thing. Yeah, so time to upgrade the Hellbrute into actually scary. We can play up that, like, demons cause this. Make it a demon engine equivalent. Make it, like, right. a big, heftier thing so we can play up more Iron Warrior-ness or Word Bearers, whatever. You can go both ways with that one. Yeah, but, like, enhance the mechanized army. And specifically, the class thing that they should be using heresy era dreads but warped to the future (laughs) yeah i mean that does seem like a pretty big hole currently i'm with you on that (laughs) and i'm going to ban myself from saying dreadnoughts for my other chaos factions because the answer should be on all of them but we'll stick with this as my csm answer so let's move into death card then mine's kind of dumb and easy without like a fully fleshed out answer i think it would be very cool for death guard to have a unit that is gardeners make the unit look like a gardener okay it doesn't have to be good it doesn't have to be point costed well they've got the whole scythe thing of reaping the fields and all that as part of their aesthetic yes. okay but like let's play it into these are the death guards with the scythes but they're cultivating the Garden of Nurgle. So they're very clearly gardeners and not current, like, Terminator equivalent with a scythe. Make them more, like, Death Guard-specific possessed. Sure. This is what happens when you hang out in the warp too long in Nurgle's garden. Right, yeah. Let's play that aspect up. That would be cool. Okay. Mine is pretty easy. In AOS, Blightlords can ride bloat drones. Okay. 
I want the equivalent. I want some <laughs> sick Terminator with a scythe riding a bloat drone to be our fast attack thing for Death Guard that feels like this is Nurgle's army. You have your mortals riding your demons. This is a unified force of Nurgle's will. Right. That actually would be pretty cool. I think it's very simple. It's something that's obviously not unique. Many people have thought of this before. As soon as you look at what AOS has, you're like, why doesn't Death Guard have this? <laughs> Right. And you're like, well, space marines are so heavy. To which I reply, demons aren't part of reality and don't give a shit about physics. You're not wrong. All right. Speaking about not caring about the rules of reality, let's talk about my boys. You're up. Thousand sons. You only get one. I'm not going to pick a psychic dread because I just believe our dreads should be psychic. <laughs> I was going to point out that like, hey, wouldn't it be funny if you get a psychic dread? That's a rules fix. That is fixing the lore. That is not a new model. I have like 10 different ideas. Honestly, some of them are Zongor. There's other stuff. But for a classic of mine that I've always thought of since I started playing with the kits while assembling them. Everyone knows Thousand Suns suck at ranged anti-tank. Yeah, they do. I want ranged anti-tank in the form of like, when you put a heavy weapon Terminator on top of a disc, it looks so cool. And then you can imagine like three of those in a unit together. You give them all some big Melta equivalent, Laz Cannon equivalent thing that they shouldn't be able to lug around easily. Yeah. But since they're on a disc, they can. Okay. And then you make them just a very nice mobile platform for firepower and they're psychic and that's all great. The only thing that you'll have against them will probably make them like a three model unit, not five like Desolators. Yeah, I think that's probably fair, especially if they're on the disc thingy. Yeah, because they're going to be very mobile Yeah, and they're going to have good anti-tank firepower. They can't have like a melee thing if we're getting into balance reason stuff. So you just have it be they just get the disc attacks or whatever, plus, you know, unarmed fist. Sure. The basic thing you would expect that to have which kind of plays up our weakness on melee that's not a scare of a cult terminator though i'd love the 30k thing too where we get the dual sword wielding masters of the blade type thing but th <laughs> this would be my first pick before that okay okay so basically just anti-tank but in like a cool kind of way <laughs> yeah I, I want some terminators riding discs with some big giant weapons lugged around with them and just flying around blast and stuff that's fair man that's fair so I don't really play Thousand Sons, obviously, but I think the Helldrake is a cool little model. And by little, I mean it's pretty Little big. my ass. <laughs> I was going to say, part of the problem with it is giant. And I want that, but actually little and smaller and like usable. Okay. You know, like the Helldrake's awesome. But holy shit, is it impossible to put it anywhere because of those fucking insane wings bands? You want like a flying fast attack. You want yeah. the Hell Drake is more like a full dragon. You want Hell Drakes. You want like raptors with wings. Yeah, basically. <laughs> okay. I get that. That's cool. And I don't know if that really fits into Thousand Suns or not. A Thousand Suns just inherits all our demon stuff from CSM. You just make it a CSM unit and we just add it to our catalog. Then that should be fine, I guess. <laughs> I just, I kind of think it would be, it would look cool in my opinion. You just think the color scheme is cool because blue and gold looks awesome. That does help quite a bit. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's talk about world leaders. Probably the other cheating one because you have five kits total. I just jetpack unit. What the fuck happened? Make a jetpack unit. There's a lot of question. I this it, like yeah, the world leaders is. Why did they suddenly forget how to use bikes after using them for thirty years? Why did they suddenly forget how to use warp talons and raptors after using them for thirty years? I, it's it's a problem. <laughs> So yeah, a corn jetpack unit I can see. I'm going to go the most basic thing that I can't believe I have to wish for. A cornate terminator unit that's like a dedicated world leader's terminator. We've got one in Thousand Suns. Death Guard got two. Apparently Death Guard stole corns? Why does World Eaters not get a sweet super melee Terminator unit? Yeah, I mean, that doesn't make any sense why they wouldn't have it. That's the complete expectation that they would have a Terminator that smashes in melee. Where are all of our chain axe wielding Terminators? Yeah, I don't know. World Eaters is in a weird spot, in my opinion, given that, like, it's just, it feels like it's missing so, so much. Yeah. And it's not even, like, unique and interesting things that it's missing either it's like the basic classics yeah bit disappointing on that but we'll probably bitch about it later 
Let's move into the Imperium. This one's going to be hard to find new things for because the model bias. Yeah, but let's start with Sisters. I'll say going in, Sisters is one of the most complete armies I've had to pick for in this. They do hit a lot of the spots. They have a solid identity. It's very fleshed out. Yeah. There's not much they need anymore. If you're going for something that's not like a character riff, I would go with like Repentia, but instead of being the chainsaw wielding ones, let's go with ones who have plasma guns, but they're like stuck on always overloaded to show that they are ready to die to get their redemption. Right. Okay. I want them to be half meme, half kind of good of like, let's have this low point cost, always overloaded plasma bomb that has a ticking time bomb of its own usefulness because you're going to die as you roll these things. That sounds fun. (laughs) I think it's cool as an idea. I don't know if lore-wise is a reason that can't be, but it seems close enough to their whole shtick that they should be totally happy with that job. I mean, it makes sense to me, but again, I'm not the lore guy, so... What do you got? I want more tanks that are cathedrals. Oh, so you want like a Bane Blade equivalent? Like the, while they're the equivalent of like a Rhino class tank, you want the big tank that is like a whole church? Yes. The tanks that they have, I think, are super cool. They do something different and unique, and they look like a sister's tank. Let's really go for it. Like, let's make a cathedral that's on treads. I, I'm here for this. That could be a really cool centerpiece model. Yeah. I like that. Probably, like, I'm sure it would be terrible rules and point cost and competitive, but I don't care. It's a sister's tank. They're all pretty fucking stupid. <laughs> It doesn't have to be good. People always love the Bane Blade. The Bane Blade is almost never, ever good. It doesn't matter. It's a Bane Blade. Have you seen the thing? Exactly. And I want exactly that type of thing for sisters. And there's a cool way to do it. They have the aesthetics with the cathedrals. We're ready. Let's have it. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm good with it. Let's do Custodes. I think we're both going to go the same way with this. Probably. But I'm not allowed to just wish for the whole line to be updated over to plastic from Forge World. So I'll go a second best. Let's get something for Sisters of Silence so that they're more fleshed out. Yep. I want to have them get their last major army roll they can't fill out yet. Some kind of like ranged anti-tank thing that Custodes lacks without getting into resin stuff. So I'd say a Sisters tank or a heavy weapon squad, something like that, to round out the force nicely. Yeah, I'm on the same style of, I want more Sisters of Silence, I want it to be more fleshed out, and some type of vehicle-oriented type thing would be neat. I went with bikes, just because, like, custodians have bikes, and that's, like, a thing. I'm gonna give you all a spoiler, Eric went with bikes a lot. I like bikes, okay? But uh, honestly, I don't care. Your take on it is exactly what I want of, I want it to be Sisters of Silence, but more heavy weapon type thing. A way to deal with anti-tank. Okay. And he was just like, okay, put them on bikes. Custodius has cool bikes, but it doesn't have to be. I'm okay with putting them in a tank, putting them in whatever, just giving them big cannons. I don't care. But that role needs to be filled out for Sisters of Silence to be like a, a fully fleshed out part of the army. I'm good with that. How about Admech, our new boys? What you got there? Fuck Skitari. Let's do anything else. <laughs> yeah, I think we both went the same way with this one, too. Yeah, this is something that you've talked about in, like, Admech had their cult mechanicus stuff. 30k Admech exists, and when they were building Admech for 40k, they went Skitari heavy because cult mechanicus stuff existed in 30k, and there was this whole thing where they were like, don't worry, we're getting all the Forge World units moved over to 40k eventually, we've got our best guy on it, and then he had a heart attack and died or something. That's not a joke. That happened. Yeah. And then apparently because that was like his private pet project, no one else will work on that task. So all of the 30k admech stuff will never reach 40k now. So we kind of need something new then if we're not going to make the existing Forge World stuff move over to be playable. Yeah. And the Skatari are kind of neat. It's interesting, but they're supposed to be an interesting take on the cult mechanicus. Like, the cult mechanicus stuff is supposed to be, like, this is why you're here. This is what Admech is supposed to be. And then the Skatari are this offshoot that's kind of its own little interesting, unique take on it. So we just need, we need the cult mechanicus stuff back. And I say, let's go big and chunky for the first one. And I went the exact same way. I went with, I want more robot-centric Admech. 
I want the middle ground between the Castellans and proper knights. Yes. I want to see, like, the Iron Giant, but with, like, brains in jars wrapped around his head to make him function. I want some real fucked up ad mech stuff. Holy shit. That would be so cool. Iron Giant, but with brains in jars. Dude, that's aw- that That would be perfect, man. That would be so fucking cool. I want the, like, slightly creepy take on something that should look like a pretty innocent design design yeah and and honestly like that's just there is a hole that admech has right now in 40k it's obvious and it just needs to be filled so i think that this is a good first step this would really show everybody hey cult mechanicus is still a thing and we can still do cool stuff all right so let's move into guard i'll start us off here yeah i'm sure that you've got some lore thing so gw like refuses to let katia's destruction mean anything so we're stuck <laughs> with katians forever we can never move on to like better regiments like krieg who are cool looking so i guess let's have the tempestus scions get expanded if we can't have good looking ig units so for the scions they just need more support in general i say let's give them like a more melee commando loadout type thing Something to be like the, because they're the elite stormtroopers. Let's give them more special out loadouts than just guys with guns that look like every other guard regiment. Oh, it's those ones. I just had to look it up. Got it. Okay, I'm I'm on board. All right, what do you have then, Eric? I don't know, really, honestly. I think the Attilan style is such a weird aspect in 40k. Oh, the the horses, the like anti-tech. I think it would be cool to see a bit more of that for guard. And like specifically, like let's put horses on the battlefield in the science fiction war game. It's dumb. Yeah. It's stupid. But at the same time, it feels very 40k. Feels 40k and it feels guard like of what do we do? We don't have the budget for a tank. We don't have the budget for uh whatever. We don't have the budget for all terrain vehicles that are small. Yeah. We do have horses though. Let's use those. And you know, it's one of those that like guard doesn't need that in its rule set to like like they have ways of handling what that would fit but it would be a neat additional section to kind of flesh out more this is where i blow your mind and tell you krieg have the death riders of krieg who are the other horse unit that doesn't have plastic models ah they also have the ability to have a commander riding his horse really yeah there's whole things that exist only in forge world that never got turned into plastic models because they're not cadian okay so like i'm not completely insane to want some more horse models (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> nope, you just aren't allowed because Kadia wouldn't do it. Ah, uh, fucking Kadia. It's good they just got destroyed. Glad they're dead and then got an entirely new planet that's called New Kadia and it means nothing in the lore. Brilliant. Because chaos can never win. Chaos tags. Chaos tags. <laughs> Speaking of chaos never being able to win, Grey Knights. <laughs> Hello, plot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you want in your army, Eric? There are a decent number of things I want, but honestly, we're in a good spot. Like, we have a lot of options to fill out the, like, general roles that you would want in an army. I guess. I don't agree with Eric on this one. You're a two-box army. You have the tactical marine thing where you have a box that fills out 15 roles because it's a lazy way to finish up an army. Like, you don't have to do any work as the guy manufacturing that. You just slap options and go, there you go. This one unit can be played 30 different ways. Don't ask me for more. Okay, yeah, we could have more specific units for each of those, but, like, we have the options. So, like, we're not, like, really hurting for anti-tank. We have options for this. Okay, I get that aspect. Also, I would want, I can't say it, but I want Hilda Drago to not be shit. But since that's breaking our rules, I think it would be neat to have a model that's like the prognosticator. Oh, the prognosticars? Yeah, right now we've got the add-on type things of wisdom of the prognosticars or whatever yeah because the lore wise the prognosticars are like the guys who see the future and yeah they're like the high command type thing yeah and that's awesome i like the upgrades that go on there but i feel like we could use that as a model another librarian kind of psyker this is the most psyker grain. Yeah, like that's its job. It's a psyker. And I think it would be cool to have another one of those. And I think the prognosticars would be the model I would want for that. Okay, that makes sense. And they could have 
a bit more twist to it of like future sight and that kind of stuff in its rules but you know it's just when i was like i'm in gray knights for paladins and i'm in gray knights for psychers yeah. let's get more psychers that are like it's the psyker it's the awesomest awesome psyker so that'd be neat what do you have so you don't have bikes and you didn't vote for bikes so i'll do it for you <laughs> Uh, I want specifically, I do not want them to look like Space Marine bikes. Okay. I want to separate that you guys have the special toys that Melkador set you up with. And I think that's why I didn't vote bikes is because like, I don't want generic. Grey Knights shouldn't have just like, oh, it's a bike. Ha 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 ha. Like, and I feel like that would happen. So I'm just like, no, bikes aren't for me. So to teach you a small story, there exist bikes in 30k that are like the bikes that are too good and don't exist in 40k because the Space Marines ran out of them or something. <laughs> Brilliant. So they used to have hover bikes that looked like the Custodes ones. Yeah. And lore-wise, over the last 10,000 years, they've fallen out of existence because they didn't upkeep their shit. And lore-wise, the Custodes got to keep them because they have the Vaults of Terra. Right. Realistically, the actual reason is GW doesn't like how hover bikes look. They like how Tonka Truck 1980s garbage toys look. <laughs> so they like the Space Marine Tonka Trucks. This is why the only army that gets hover bikes is the one that was designed by Forge World as plastic models, which is why custodies get hover bikes and no one else does. Hey, there you go. If you want to see why this isn't lore accurate for why Space Marines don't have hover bikes, look no further than Necromunda, where random 18-year-olds in a gang in a city are allowed to have jet bikes. But Space Marines can't find them anymore. What I'm saying is Space Marines are dumber than your average kid spray painting shit on a wall <laughs> <laughs> i mean sounds about right that's what the lore is implying here or we admit that gw didn't like this design and they're wrong i mean i don't hate the aspect of the jet bikes being special yeah which is why i'm saying if we're going to keep it a lore thing let's give the gray knights these okay so it's them and the custodies have these higher tech than the space marines yeah like the elite army type things get the elite cool options okay yeah i'm, I'm okay with that because i'm all aboard bikes and stuff like that but no, don't give Grey Knights a stupid bike on the ground. We're not giving them Outriders. We're not giving them the stupid no, McDonald's toys. I would be so fucking disappointed. <laughs> so, yeah, no, that's a great idea. Love it. So, we got to separate them. Let's talk about Imperial Knights and what they need that's different than Chaos Knights. Hell yeah, dude. I guess I'll start. I want big. You want, like, the thing just shy of a titan? Yes. You want to, like, obscure the line of where the night houses end and the titans begin? Yeah, let's make it, like, somebody looks at it and they're like, oh, that's a titan. And they're like, no, 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 no. It's almost a titan. <laughs> but that's a knight. And Forge World has those. It's like the porphyrian or something yeah but i don't know it just that one it's very dumb looking out of the forest world knights it's about the only one that i think looks stupid yeah i was gonna say like it's it's kind of where we're at but like a little bit bigger and like make it not not that <laughs> but yeah that's kind of what i'm looking for like the chaos knights can go into the chaos theme like let's make them corrupted the imperial knights let's really go into like like their big tech they're trying to be Titan stuff. Okay. I went a different way, but I get what you're saying there. I don't know, like, the lore stuff of, like, what else is available. So I'm just like, what's a cool model for this? Yeah. And that, to me, is, like, that would be a cool knight model. Yeah. But what do you have? Because I'm sure that yours is a bit more lore and interesting related. So we could go smaller and do something smaller than the armagers, as the non-cool knights call them. So that so there's something for lower than 2,000 points that feels correct. Because knights is a very feast or famine army. It's why it's not recommended as your only army, because you'll get very bored of it very quickly on how it plays. Especially if you're trying to play under 2k points. It's just like... I have two models, yay. Yeah, so we could go smaller, but I won't. Yeah, it just doesn't feel right. We could go bigger, but you took bigger, so we won't do that. So let's go for some Turbo Heresy. Oh? Call's back in the setting, screwing with shit again. <laughs> let's get Call some knights and let him go to town and see what stupid shit he comes up with. Okay, so you're thinking like... I'm talking like Covercraft knights, <laughs> like... I. 
I want dumb looking new lore knights that are hilariously different and will anger people and I will soak it up. Dude, I think that actually sounds very cool. And honestly, a hover knight would be amazing. It would be very stupid because the way that their hover bases and connection points work in 40k are dumb and like they would have to redesign it for a knight size, <laughs> but it would be very cool. All right, so that covers all the armies in the game, I think, right? We didn't miss any? Um, I think we might have missed just a small little one. Oh, I, no one plays Space Marines, Eric. It's a very unpopular faction. It's not like 40% of all people playing. Yeah, it's also not like they have like 300 data sheets. Yeah, which I'm not allowed to wish to delete them. I have to add more, so... <laughs> Yeah. God forgive me for that, but let's go with what you want first. Okay, so the Phobos armor is really cool. It is. I like the tactical look. Some people hate it, but I actually do. I enjoy the more Master Chief-y looking look. Yeah, and it's different. A large part of why I think it's cool is just because it's different. And there's so much same in Space Marines to me. It's just dudes in tin cans, so it's nice to have visual difference between your faster ones, your heavier ones, stuff like that. Exactly. So I would like another Phobo Space Marine that's more melee, but also kind of like... What, the Reavers with their combat knives don't do it for you? No, not really. <laughs> you must be alone on that opinion. I Honestly, I kind of want like Orc Commandos, but... Phobo Space Marines. If we're being honest, that's what Reavers are supposed to but be. But they're not. They're not. <laughs> but they're not. They're just not. So <laughs> do it right this time, basically. Make them feel like proper melee blenders, like a Blade Guard vet. Yeah. There exists an interesting model there that also would be fun to play in the army that would look different than a lot of what we've got. So yeah, Phobo Space Marine, Blade Guard, melee focused kind of thing. That's where I'm at. Okay, I get it. What do you have? I'm going to choose the most basic thing, the thing that's been rumored a hundred times over the last five years yet never comes true. Oh? The final hole in the Primaris line. Holy shit. Jump pack Primaris. You want another Primaris, huh? You asked for Primaris too. Phobos is Primaris, Eric. Nah, it's different. The same thing. Nope, looks different. So jump pack primaris is the final thing missing so we can finally shoot the tactical marines into the sun never mention them again outside of like dark angels <laughs> for terminators we'll just update that kit and give it a real torso and real legs and say the primaris guys figured out how to wear it dude yeah terminators yeah <laughs> i'm on board of <laughs> updating that you don't like your terminators being short than a basic marine it's a bit annoying <laughs> But yeah, okay, so you want Jump Pack Primaris. Yeah, and that that wraps up all of the classic standard Space Marine types. They will all exist at that point, other than, what about my exact loadout I love on this old tactical squad from 19 Dickety 2 that hasn't been made in 35 years? Our chaplains used to be able to be in Dreadnoughts. I do enjoy that, like, anytime we wish for something Space Marine related, you're always just like, Delete tactical marines. Whatever I need to do <laughs> to fill holes to make it so that tactical marines can go away, that's what you want. I want to have the data sheet count. So if adding one data sheet lets me remove a hundred, I'm for it. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious, man. But I do think that that actually does round it up now. Thankfully, because this got a little bit out of hand. This is a longer recording than I intended. Yeah, but it was it was fun. I enjoyed the different take on not a bunch of research and let's just talk about cool stuff. <laughs> it's fair. These are good palate cleansers after we've done something meteor. Yeah, definitely. So I guess on that, let's get out of here for the week. Sounds good. Sounds good.